Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Please join me in offering this Mass as a fourth anniversary for Lillian Wisniewski. Faith is the realization of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. That's the way the, first, the chapter that we'll hear in our first reading begins talking about all of those who have gone before us in faith. In that beginning of the chapter that we would have heard on Saturday, we're introduced to these many figures of faith, those that are known from the Bible and those that are known from our own lives, those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, giving us the hope of eternal life in Christ. Let us trust in God's gift of faith as we recognize our own need for his mercy and forgiveness so that we too might share in the great mysteries that we celebrate today. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, what more shall I say? I have not time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was righteous, obtained the promises. They clothed the mouths of lions, put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword. Out of weakness they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Some were tortured and would not accept deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, put to death at sword's point. They went about in skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains, in caves and in crevices in the earth. Yet all these, though approved because of their faith, did not receive what had been promised. God had foreseen something better for us, so that without us they should not be made perfect. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which, toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plotting of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, whose wondrous mystery has shown me in a fortified city. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Once I said in my anguish, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard the sound of my pleading when I cried out to you. Let your heart take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requires those who act proudly. Let your heart take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Be with 
you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gay Rasones, when he got out on the boat. It was a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillside. He was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirits, come out of the man. He asks him, What is your name? He replied, Leisure is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside. And they pleaded with him, send us into the shine, let us answer them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the shine. The herd of about 2,000 2, ratcheted down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The shine herds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the countryside. And the people came out to see what had happened. Uh, as they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by leisure, sitting there, clothed and in his right mind and they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He 
had frequently been bound with shackles and chains. So often we face shackles and chains in our lives, not of the literal kind, of course, although many people do, but the limitations that we face because of our need to be set free. Whether it's the limitations caused by our own sin or the uh, human weakness of others, the limitations we face are real. The torturous description in the first reading, which I will not repeat, of what so many people in faith have gone through in generations before and even in our present day world in some places describes the desperation that we need to recognize in our own lives and in the lives of others as we cry out to be set free by God's loving, merciful kindness. The man who was possessed by legion today would have probably been simply dismissed as being crazy and put in an institution. But whether due to mental illness or to evil possession, his shackles were far more than physical. As we walk this journey of life, may we recognize in one another the burdens that each other carries, the hardships, the pain, the loss, the sadness, and especially the, these days, the isolation and loneliness that so many of our sisters and brothers experience so that we too may help them to be open to Jesus breaking those shackles and chains so that we can experience in our own hearts, in our own lives, the freedom that only Jesus can bring when we, through the gift of faith, realize what we truly hope for, to be set free when that gift of faith makes present the love of God and the mercy that God showed in Jesus to the Gerasene man, setting him free not only of one of his problems, but legions of problems, so that he could then be probably the only one in Mark's gospel that Jesus says, go and tell others about what God has done for you. That joy of being set free is irreplaceable. Turning to God, who in his providential care hears our every need, we offer our prayers of the faithful. For the church and her holy leaders and pastors who have to struggle against unclean spirits in our own day, that through the power of Jesus they may be victorious. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those engaged in the cause of life, of justice, of peace, that the Lord may clear away before them the evil influences that oppose their loving efforts in his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith or for their moral convictions, that they may be brave and persevering and win through to the prize of life. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel in their anguish of body or spirit that they are cut off from the Lord's sight, that the sound of our pleading on their behalf may bring them into the healing shelter of God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dear departed loved ones, especially for Lillian, who by faith did what was just, that they may now obtain the promises they hoped for in the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for Adam, our 18-year-old parishioner who is uh, struggling to recover from the injuries of his dirt bike accident, and for AJ in the Bishop Fian High School community who experienced a traumatic injury playing hockey last week, that they may both be experiencing the irrepressible love of God that sets them free, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers, those spoken, and those prayers we hold deep in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to trust in you in all ways, in all things in our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you have led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together, with Francis our Pope, and Sean our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Lillian, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our heavenly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Martha, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you 
through Jesus Christ, your son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Without making contact, let us offer one another some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land.
On behalf of those joining us by video, we pray the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us for this Mass this morning. A couple of quick announcements. Daily Mass tomorrow will be online only because of the storm coming in and the fact that uh, we'll be preparing for a funeral at 11 a.m. It'll be hard enough digging out for that, so I'm not going to ask the staff to dig out for two Masses in the middle of the storm. So tomorrow's Daily Mass will be online only. Uh, we'll resume Mass in person on Wednesday. And the other announcement is that uh, as I mentioned in the uh, beginning of Mass, the readings are kind of continuous daily, from, from most daily Masses to the next. And so it'll be nice that starting this Saturday we have a daily Mass on Saturday again, 9 a.m. at St. Martha Church beginning this Saturday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Dig out those shovels. Mm -hmm.